This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. It's another day that was not promised. It's another day that the Lord has kept us. We're here to celebrate and magnify, glorify, worship the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Uh, we have a Father that is an awesome God. We have a way to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his righteous and holy name. Amen. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Hey. Sunday. My baby got a breakthrough. My baby oh. got a breakthrough. <laughs> <Please> <laughs> Like a prayer. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We bless your name, Lord God. We lift you up today, Lord God. We love you. We praise you. We worship you today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to be here, Lord God, this day. Bless the families, Lord God. Bless the people, Lord God, who uh, are joining in with us this morning, Lord God. And let us uh, have words of encouragement. Let something be said to encourage them and to uh, motivate them, Lord God, and to help them, Lord God, and, and, and help them to understand what it is you have for all of us, Lord God. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen and amen. We are uh, in a trying time right now and... And it's funny because the conversation that my wife and I had just before uh, our broadcast kind of leads into our subject today, which is kind of cool. So uh, would you like to, uh, let's get started. And, okay. and uh, today our lesson is? Depression. How should Christians view depression? That is such a good, that's a good, good thing mm -hmm. to talk about. All right. Still, the word depression doesn't appear in scripture. As it used to, as 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 it is used today, with the exception of Proverbs twelve twenty five in the New King James Version, which offers just a quick note among other snippets of wisdom. Amen. Let's do the scripture and then I'll come back and talk right quick. Proverbs twelve twenty five from the New King James Version: Anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. Amen. Amen. And and we're going to learn today, you know, that that it's been a taboo word that that's in the church and, and that more people than, you know, face it based upon the statistics we're going to share today. And as uh, Sister Rhonda, good morning, Rhonda. Love you. Miss you. Uh, she said this is a serious issue. And then she also said uh, this is a serious issue that needs more than prayer. That needs more than prayer. Amen. And that's absolute truth. So let's get into our lesson for today. The Hebrew word for ways down is shaka. Shaka. Is that how you say? Close enough. <laughs> Which, yeah. Okay. Which translates translates to bow down or depress. What is depression? Depression is a mood disorder that involves a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Other words for depression, despair, unhappiness, sorrow, sadness, wow, downheartedness. That should be a whoa. Oh, whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, downheartedness, misery, hopelessness, melancholy, uh, dejection, gloominess slump hollow and and uh, again we can go into this lesson it could be probably a series but i don't i just want to go because of what we're going through with this COVID and we're shut in that two sides two two let me stop here just for a second before we get really into our lesson and understand kind of how how uh, i operate or how we operate is that that one i'll give you the basics of what it is and then right now because we're going through this COVID mm -hmm. virus that the second part of this is we who have hope need to get out and help those that don't have hope. So if you're, if you're sitting behind your four walls of your home, if you're just going to work in home, just realize that there are other people out there that are suffering because they lost their job, uh, they lost loved ones, yes. uh, they've been shut in and lost their freedom. So that causes misery, that causes brokenheartedness, that brought sorrow, sadness, all the things that depression brings upon us. In other words, for depression, it brings it upon us. So we need to understand that it's not just about us because no longer I have a Christ in us. And we talked about a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even last week, that we are 
goodwill ambassadors and as goodwill ambassadors we're supposed to share that goodwill to to all men amen, amen. and so i want to make sure we we tackle and to each other oh say it again because sometimes we go through it Ooh. so we have to uh uh help each other check on each other and see how you know you don't see someone or don't hear from someone check on each other because we might be going through something that you know i might be going through something you might not know amen and need that word of encouragement or need that boost or need just to hear your voice just to say hello how are you so and sometimes you'll see a personality change and when you see the personality change, you know, don't just think it's because they're going through work. Maybe they are, or there's some issues at home that that they feel like they don't have hope. And the person even in the home feels like they don't have hope, or they can't hear God, or we're not communicating right. Mm -hmm. That that'll cause a person to go into depression and be sad. Mm -hmm. Amen, Stan. Uh, I'm Mr. Stan. Uh, he says, "Iron shop is iron." That's the, so that's the whole truth. The same thing in the marriage and the home. I mean, especially marriage in the home, because it's one of the things where uh, I'm not going to share. She'll share it someday, what, what she's been going through, and and she got a breakthrough today. And because she found her place that when she was sad and downtrodden, what she had to do to get herself back into the presence of God, she did it and praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> so let's, let's keep going. <laughs> Unless you want to share it. What, what is Bible of the Prayer? <laughs> later <laughs> what is Amen. bible of depression a deep sense of despondency, despondency. Mm -hmm. discouragement and sadness often linked with a sense of personal powerlessness and a loss of meaning in an enthusiasm for life a person with depression may experience persistent sadness depression major depressive disorder is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. And that was from M and this was from md.com because I, I me.org, excuse me, md.org. I was looking through, look, trying to find uh, the various definitions so that way we all have an understanding of what it is from what the Bible says, and then what the world says, and then we come up with a formula in between the two to help us to be where we need to be to help others as well as to help ourselves because sometimes we don't even know we have been uh that we are suffering from something um and it takes somebody else to say it or even through something that we're doing right now that you hear and see what we're talking about go wow that's me mm -hmm. it is so don't, don't and don't feel like you're alone that one god is with you and two that you can get help amen, amen. signs and symptoms the symptoms of depression can include a depressed mood reduced interest or pleasure in activities once enjoyed, a loss of sexual desire, changes in appetite, unintentional weight loss or gain, sleeping too much or too little, agitation, restlessness, and pacing up and down, slowed movement and speech, fatigue or loss of energy, feelings of worthlessness or guilt, difficulty concentrating or making decisions, recurrent thoughts of death or suicide or an attempt at suicide amen let me park there just for that last that last part too and, and it's something that that we've done it i've done a study on it we've done a study on it before and i want to bring it up today as well because right now when you have no hopelessness the enemy can come in and oppress you mm -hmm. right and so yes. oppression leads to depression because you feel like you've lost that connection with god as a mm -hmm. christian and so when you think you've lost it, you know, lost it and you're not in your right mind, that thoughts of suicide are even probably even, even us as Christians. Mm -hmm. And I've heard somebody say that, oh, you know, Christians, you know, if you're, you know, you're not a Christian, if you commit suicide. Well, if you're suffering from depression, which can be, which we'll talk about in a little bit, I'll just say now a chemical mm -hmm. and or spiritual imbalance that, that the enemy that gives play for that little crack in the armor that the enemy can come in and distract you and get you into doubt to get you into hopelessness get you into loss get you into lack get you in all those places that will cause you to guess what be depressed mm -hmm. and then he amen as well as grief. grief thank you stan all those things are feeling worthless being you know you know uh, you just just you don't want to get out of bed I, you know i remember yeah, all those things the enemy will use that to get you to do suicidal thoughts and if you if you have no one to, to counsel you no one to love on you you're all by yourself especially going through what we're going through right now that's why suicide is on a rise because 
the enemy's coming in like a flood. He is doing some things right now that, that matter of fact, our world is in something that we've never done before, but at the same time, it is causing us to, to, to be alone. It's causing us to have all these things where the enemy can divide and conquer. We're not in church like we used to be. We're doing church online. So there's that, 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 the, 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 the low touch and, and, and high, you know, high tech. And so all those things can cause a person to slip into depression and from depression, once the enemy opened up and that thank you, stand in isolation, then guess what? You have there's an opportunity for you to want to commit suicide. And if you're depressed enough, you'll even commit suicide. Mm -hmm. So I think, and, and, and I'm based upon what scripture talks about that what will separate you from the love of God, it's 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 nothing will separate, but because you're in a mental illness state that you're not in your right mind, and the enemy will win, and if the enemy wins and causes you to think not think correctly, you commit suicide. That's Some right. people, but as yeah. as Rhonda said, that mental illness uh, will develop into depression. Grief will put you into a depression state. But all suffering from depression don't have thoughts of suicide. Amen. So that's what yeah, but I'm just saying in general. Thank you, thank you, Rhonda. Yes. But we just got to know and understand too that that there are people that have suicidal thoughts, and and I want to say as Christians that if a person. Um, and it's dealing with that and they go to the extreme yeah. that suicide can be, you know, they can attempt suicide or, or, right. or go ahead and, and complete it. So I just wanted to put that there just for us to know that, that you're still a Christian. You still go to heaven because of one mistake. Yes. So anyway, let's keep going. Depression affects an estimated one in 15 adults, 6.7% in any given year. And one in six people, 16.6%, will experience depression at some time in their life. Uh oh, oops. There we go. In females, depression is nearly twice as common among women as men, according to the Centers for uh, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention (CDC). Right. So we have to make sure we stay on top of this, men. Look for those signs, so that way we can help. First and foremost, by by prayer. But then taking action, that means either getting him to uh, a medical doctor. Get, let me stop before I get too far. Because <laughs> we're going to talk about that in a minute anyway. What are some factors of depression? Biochemistry, differences in certain chemicals in the brain may con contribute to symptoms, contribute. Of, contribute to symptoms <laughs> of depression. Genetics, depression can run in families. For example, if one identical twin has depression, the other has a 70% 70 70 chance of having the illness sometime in life. Personality. People who with low self-esteem, who are easily overwhelmed by stress, or who are generally pessimistic, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> appear yeah. to be more likely to experience depression. Environmental factors. Continuous Exposure to violence, neglect, abuse, or poverty may make some people more vulnerable to depression. And amen, Sister Rhonda. <laughs> those those are, those are very <laughs> scary. It's, that's why we're talking about it today. Matter of fact, I have a good friend of mine who's a pastor who uh, he did. He used to live out here and he moved out of town, and 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 he's he's written a book on depression, and he's done a series on depression, and. And him as a pastor, that's a worship leader in church, works with you know very active in his church, also suffered from depression. If he, you know he found out it was a medical thing, and so he got on meds mm -hmm. to help him. And, and so all these factors we got to take in consideration that even the very elect of God can suffer from this mental illness. Depression is also a spirit. In Isaiah sixty-one verse three. To appoint unto them the, that mourn in Zion, to give, to give unto them beauty for ashes, mm -hmm. the oil for joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. The Bible is very clear. The spirit of heaviness is connected to depression. Therefore, depression is a spirit. And the root cause of depression is a dysfunctional connection with God, mainly through a misunderstand of his word. 
There should be misunderstanding. misunderstanding. <laughs> Sorry about that. I did this. I got up super early this morning, so right. I do apologize, but y'all with me, right? So, yeah. so one of the things that that I, as I was studying this out and and have dealt with it, you know, even in myself, I've been depressed before, so I'm going to mm -hmm. confess yep, that now. Me too. That the spirit <laughs> of heaviness is a spirit, and that uh, the root cause is first and foremost we're born into sin. You're going to hear me that a lot this year. Born into sin, we're shaped in iniquity. So that dysfunction of even born into sin, that all the baggage that were with us, that, that before we gave our lives to the Lord, we got to shed that stuff off from, from if it's generational, if it's environmental, if it's mental illness, that even though we come into Christ, yes, all things are passed away, all things have become new, but we still have to deal with the issue. Yeah, and, if and we, deal with life. It's everyday life because losing someone, can take you into depression. Amen. And you know, we've all gone through it. Yes. And if we are isolated, I remember I know um uh, from being from experience that losing when I lost my mom, I was by myself. I well, not by myself, but there was a lot of times that I was by myself. And I called um uh, this lady friend of mine and she was like, you have to get out of that house because I was I would be in the house, just be in my room for days by myself. Mm. She's like, you got to get get out, go to go walk around, go to the mall or something. Just get out of the house because I'm sitting, you know, I'm at home and you're just thinking all these other thoughts come into your mind. That the That's where plans. the enemy. Yeah, he, he just he really works on you when you're by yourself. So. And Rhonda says, we have to be aware of us who know how to put on a public face. Ask me how I know. 2019 to 2020, a lot of people in ministry committed suicide. That public face image is a killer, literally. Amen. Yes. Yep. That's true. Yes. Well, okay. Uh oh, that's the wrong way. Thank you. Our hearts can be downcast. The spirit can bring a heaviness over us. It tries to rob our hope. And that's his job. Mm -hmm. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And if he can get us out of hope, because our whole, our whole faith in Christ, our walk in Christ, our relationship with God is through faith, knowing that, that he is rewarded him that diligently seek him, that he, he'll do a seeking ability, all he has in hope. And, but if we get out of hope and knowing that, oh man, I I know that he's going to do it, then we can fall into yeah, what we're talking about today. Think, feel like we're defeated. Come on, <laughs> amen. And that devil is a liar. Ooh, that's <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> it brings a heavy, oppressive feeling. It tries to steal our faith. Depression tries to come over us like a dark, heavy cloud. When the cloud is hanging over us, it may come over us at once like a plague. Oh, it, oh, let me stop there. And that's what we're going through right now, y'all. That right now there's a plague on the world, and that plague is called the coronavirus, and it's trying to divide and conquer us, and it's hanging over us. And so if we don't do put on our garment of praise, you know, and, and do the things that we're gonna talk about in a couple of minutes, that you'll get caught up in that and you'll allow the enemy that one little chink in your armor. To come in and start sowing those seeds of discord, sowing those seeds of depression, of, of hopelessness, and all the things we've already shared with the, with the definition that he can use those things against you. And if you don't have no one to stand in agreement with you to go through it, that you can come out as silver as, as, as pure gold, then guess what? We'll follow the depression. And, and as Christians, we all have um, something that God gave us of how we can um, connect with him. And so when we feel sad or we feel depressed or we feel anxiety or we feel certain things that's bringing us down, we need to get back into that place or use that that gift or that God gave us to connect back with him. Amen. So some of us have a prayer life. Some of us worship. And those things that we have, we need to use and get connected to God so that um, we can be refreshed with his spirit and lifted back up again. Ooh. So we have to remember that as Christians, 
we have to fill ourselves with those things. The, his word, prayer, praise and worship. And then that will help to renew our mind, to keep our focus on him and come come from being down and come back up Amen. to him, Amen. connect to him. So you just gave us a remedy. So I, just wanted, I just wanted to say it. Get that on your <laughs> go ahead, baby. Go ahead. Go ahead. It can cause us to isolate. It tries to steal our love, wants to make us feel alone, and it tries to steal our relationship with God. Oops. Which Bible character struggled with depression? The Psalms are loaded with depression. Most of the Psalms are thought to have been written by King David, who penned many of them during extremely low periods in his life. So my spirit grows faint within me. My heart within me is dismayed. He writes in Psalm 143, verse 4, and then a few lines later, answer me quickly, Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, or I will be like those who go down to the pit. Amen. 143, verse 7. Let me say this on a side note. You know, when right now is we have a great opportunity. Those that are working from home, um, those that are that are uh, uh, are quarantined, mm -hmm. it's a good time to journal. You know, that's what that's what you know. That's basically what what. David did. He journaled. You know, he wrote songs and, and prayers and worship and, and anecdotes of, of, and I said it wrong, but um, that's how he was able to get rid of it. I mean, he was a worshiper as well, which we all know that, or if you don't know that, you know, David was a worshiper. He was a man after God's own heart. So get into worship, get into mm -hmm. praise, and write it down. Yes. In addition to David and Saul, other Bible characters wrestled hard with depression and mood disorders. Moses had a dark wilderness period of his own several times over the course of his long life. The prophet Jeremiah rejected, rejected, mocked by his people, poverty stricken, and deeply lonely struggled with depression throughout his days. Judas Iscariot, so overcome with guilt and pain over the wrong he did in betraying Jesus, hanged himself. And before I go to the next one, um, uh, I want to add, I should have added this in here and I didn't. Um, when Jesus was on the cross, and I can't say the Hebrew, I, I don't remember how to say it in Hebrew, but basically says, Lord, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. That he was so grieved and when he was in, mm -hmm. in when he was in, in the uh, in Gethsemane and he, he was so rilt and so, so rent with, with, pain and of what was going to happen to him that he got a depression that he prayed so hard that blood droplets came out of him mm -hmm. so so even our jesus went through everything and but he was able to overcome because he, he knew what his purpose was mm -hmm. and he was able to overcome because he had he knew how you know he knew that if he connected with god that god would bring him through his yes. father amen so it's thing for us so i want to add that there too because i want to make sure we know that even our jesus went through Job was abandoned, was despondent after he lost everything. He held dear in what some might argue was a cruel test. The entire book of Lamentations is a poetic expression of the Hebrews' deep, unabashed depression after the fall of Jerusalem with no hope of redemption or rescue. So letting us know that God is no respecter of person, mm -hmm. that he put it into his word to know that you're not alone right. and that there is a, there is a ray of hope for those that feel hopeless. Amen. Amen. How should Christians view depression? It's clear then that depression isn't just a problem today, but one people struggled with hundreds of years before Christ. Even before Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And see, and the thing about it is, and what we have today that we didn't have then is we got the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Woo! <laughs> oh, ah, glory. <laughs> it was a real pressing problem. One that started wars and leveled leaders, and one that had no easy solution. Time after time, the Bible presents stories of depressed people crying out to God, begging for help or for him to just take the pain away. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Say a lot. <laughs> time after time, the Bible presents stories of depressed people crying out to God, begging for help for him to just take the pain away. It's not identified as a sin, but but an earthly hardship, perhaps much like oppression or even 
poverty, which Jesus himself said we will always have with us. Matthew 26 and 11. And scripture also tells us, which is not part of our life. I mean, I can go on and on and on because, because the Bible is full of solutions, but also mm -hmm. the problems and then the solution is him. That, that we should go through hardship. We right. should go through trials and tribulations. And we just talked about that last week. That's kind of what led us today for the lesson today, that we can go too far, that if we don't restore ourselves, don't get back in his presence, do the things that as we go through trials and tribulations and the monkey gets on our back, that, that the Bible says lay aside the weight and the sin that always besets us. The weight could be depression. The weight mm -hmm. could be sadness. The weight could be grief. And it's okay to grieve and mourn, but, but don't, don't stay there. Oh, come on, somebody. You can't stay there. You got to come out of that. You got to pick yourself up and fight back. You can't let, let uh, Satan overtake your mind. Get back in there. Get into your word. Pray. Praise. Worship. Just, just saturate yourself as much as you can in Jesus. Amen. And that's what we're about to talk about right now. What does the Bible say about treating depression? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> but as with all the problems people face, there is one thing we are supposed to do with them. Bring them to God. Ooh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jesus acknowledged the weight of our problems, whether physical or emotional, promising, come to me, all, all. you... All. 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 Some? All. Many? All. Okay. <laughs> Just check it. Just check it. <laughs> <laughs> All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And one of the biggest, oh, go ahead. In Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 through 30. And one of the biggest challenges that we face as Christians, let me say this up front, you know, I, okay, I'll say it. As a man, I'll mm -hmm. say it for me. Okay. That 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 we were taught as kids that we handle our own problems, mm -hmm. that that we deal with it, that mm -hmm. we that we man up, uh -huh. you know. And as we man up, you know, then we suppress those feelings and yeah. things and anguish and stuff that's going mm -hmm. with us. And then guess what? We fall into depression as well as y'all mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. But we internalize it more. But what happens to us is mm -hmm. we'll pick up a bottle, we'll pick up a joint. Mm -hmm. We'll pick up, you know, some other stuff that mm -hmm. we're not supposed to pick up, Sally Mae or Herman, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, thinking that those things are going to help with feel, that problem. Feel that, feel that hole, make you feel better. But the only thing they can do up. that is cast all your cares on Jesus. Ooh, come on. That's it. That's Pastor all Kevin about. says, uh, there we go. We need to double up on our daily spiritual maintenance plan. That is absolutely correct. Stay in the Bible, reading marinating in word praying and talking to god every amen. single day amen thank you pastor kevin so jesus it oh go ahead you can post that yep let me let me put that up yeah get the next one up there we go it's almost done did you skip one no wait did i let me go back yeah oh okay yeah, okay <laughs> hope does hope does lie in god as the psalmist writes in 42 11 but it is important to understand that just because we put our hope and faith in God doesn't mean our problem goes away. Like cancer, diabetes, and other diseases, sometimes we will have it the rest of our earthly life. And just know, well, let me keep going and then we'll stop. The Apostle Paul struggled with what he called a thorn in the flesh, <clears throat> a physical, <clears throat> excuse me, a physical ailment that caused him much torment. In 2 Corinthians 12 and 7, he begged for God to take it away, but God told him, no, that God's power was able to shine more brightly in Paul's weakness in 12, 9 through 10. As he wrote about the same time in his letter to the church in Philippi, Paul discovered what was for him the secret to contentment, focusing on the Lord and drawing our strength from him in Philippians 4. 10 through 13. Amen. And Pastor Kevin says, praying without ceasing and when depression start and when depression starts leaving, continue your SMP. Spiritual maintenance Spiritual plan. Spiritual maintenance plan. And All we love right. you too, Amen. Pastor Kevin. Amen. And so again, we're sharing these scriptures for us to understand that, that uh, there is a way of escape. There's a way out. 
and that we're not alone if we look at who our predecessors were, were that the apostles and pastors and those in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament have suffered depression, but they had a remedy. And you know, as we're learning and already know that sometimes we forget. Mm -hmm. And so this is a reminder for some of us, as well as, as I said from the very beginning of our lesson today, that if we if we know that right now we're we're in a position where mm -hmm. we're at, that that we need to go help all those other folks that we know that are alone and lonely and need uh, and need help. Yeah. And and just check on your brother and sister because we are our brothers and sisters keeper. Yes. Amen? Amen. And so when we do that, we're doing we're the true goodwill ambassadors, not just for ourselves. Because we're showing for the good work of our Father who is in heaven, but at the same time, as goodwill ambassadors, we go share that goodwill, as I said earlier, share that love, compassion, mm -hmm. and understanding to help those that are afflicted. One, to pray for them, mm -hmm. and two, love on them. Yeah. You know, don't don't tell them they they sinned. You know, like they try to do with Job mm -hmm. and, and other areas of the Bible yeah. they talked about that. No, depression is a spirit, yes. and and we all go through little times of that. Times of that. Mm -hmm. All of us. If you say you didn't, you're a liar. Uh, I'll, okay, everybody's you know, everybody's gone through. Now, how do you come through it? Because it's it's a part of what we go through in life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so we go through loss, we go through lack, we go through all these things, and because we're doing that, then we need to be focused on Jesus, who is the one that's able to keep us and present us. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, we're almost done. Let me, let me, let me. All right. Go and ahead. to his young friend and mentee Timothy, whom Paul knew struggled with frequent illnesses, stomach issues, and other hardships, Paul offered some encouraging words. Flee from evil, fight the good fight, take hold of eternal life. In 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 12. Right, and so flee from evil. So again, if 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 we do what my, you know, what my, my wife has been saying, that we enter into his presence with the thanksgiving, to his course be praised, be thankful unto him, and bless his name. And so when you get into worship, you get into praise, and as Pastor Kevin says, and Ryan says, if you get into his word, then guess what? It will flee because that's his word. Resist the devil, he will flee. So so fight the good fight and take hold to the, you know, because even if you go through for the rest of your life battling with it, that you, you know, God has overcome the world, and in due season, you'll reap if you faint not. Amen? Will not overtake your mind. That's right. If you don't let it. If you don't let it. If you, keep, if you stay in his word right. and keep doing it. Ooh, come on, somebody. Amen. <laughs> some people suffer from depression. Some people suffering from depression is medical. So you need to take meds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I put that there because you know I've seen ministries where if you if you if you take meds and, and you go to a psychologist or psychiatrist, then you're not in faith. Right. And That's so I'm true. like going, That's not true. That's why we showed that that. Well, let me keep going and you'll see in a second. We'll see in a second before I get ahead of myself. I tend to forget as, that I addressed it. <laughs> as for whether or not to take medication for depression, the Bible does not address that specifically. But Jesus in his but, life. Said again. <laughs> but Jesus oh, come on. Yeah. in his life and ministry made it clear that healing and seeking healing is a good thing. He also acknowledged that the sick need a doctor in Matthew 9, 12. And Paul, and Paul oh, sorry about that. when he mentioned Timothy's chronic stomach ailments, didn't indicate he should suffer in his illness, but rather take measures to alleviate it in 1 Timothy 5.23. Amen. So they had their own form of natural medicine back then that they used. It's not the same as you know, the pharmacy or pharmaceutical we have today, but there are there are natural and pharmaceutical stuff that will help a person to, to, to be eased. You know, because there's still, there's a, there's a, I'm going to share real quick about, there's a guy that, that I appreciate and, and you may not like him or not, or not. his name is Kanye West, mm -hmm. right? And so if you know of him, he's a man, he's a manic depression. He also, so he's, uh, he has, uh, he's bipolar and that's a medical, that's a medical thing, condition. medical condition. Mm -hmm. So as long as he's on his beds, it helped him a lot. Right. He would stay, he will stay here. But then as soon as he got full of himself or full, as soon as he thought he, he didn't need it, and he thought that he was weak and that he was a bad guy and he allowed the enemy to come in, then he would get off his meds and he would go to that manic and he would go to the extreme and do some extreme things. So I was just sharing him that that when he was doing the you know the gospel worship, you know, he was called the, the Sunday service, that that his life was like this because he was on his meds, which he needed, and then he was also learning about God, which he also needed. 
And so the balance of the two kept him focused and kept him going strong. And then something happened, mm -hmm. which we don't know what it is, <clears throat> that he got off his meds. Now he's going through some changes. So pray for him. But I'm just saying, just sharing that with you to let you know that that the very elect people that got great gifts can also suffer from depression or suffer from 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 from, from diseases that we have no, mm -hmm. no help from. And then, uh, there we go. After Kevin says... Meds and prayers can work together. Preach to the bishop. <laughs> okay, let's Praise go God. to the next one. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Let me get there. All right, there we go. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Trust in and rely confidently on the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. Amen. And, and if that's and that's where it begins. If, if when you get into hopelessness, you start doubting. Mm -hmm. So if you trust and that's know true. that his word <laughs> is, then you can rely on him no matter what you're going through. That with if you do with all your heart, then it doesn't open the door for the enemy. Mm -hmm. you know, again, you're gonna suffer. You're gonna go through. Yes. We're, not, we're not all gonna not always go. But none of us are going to walk in the spirit 100% of the time. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we'd be like Enoch mm -hmm. and we get translated up. So yeah. since that's not the case for most of us, right. that you still got to work at your own soul salvation with fear and trembling, that means that you must trust and rely in him. Yeah. And know that without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what I'm going through, that when, when, when I lean on my own understanding, mm -hmm. when I don't acknowledge him in all my ways, then the enemy could come in like a flood and kill, steal, and destroy you. Yeah. Amen. And if and, that happens, we got to get back. Right. <laughs> get back, pull it back. There you go. Start going too far to the left. You gotta pull it back in. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the truth. That's the truth. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. So when you're going through bouts of depression, don't forget about him. Because mm -hmm. when you forget about him and rec and don't recognize that he's with you, he said he'll never leave you mm -hmm. nor forsake you. Yeah. So just remember that he is with you and that he'll help you through it if you cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Because when you hold back and you want to hold on to him, that means that you're 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 leading at your own insight and your yeah. own understanding. Yeah. When you yeah. want to hold it instead of just casting all your cares, then that means you doubt him. Yeah. Because well, I got this guy. Yeah. I, I can handle this myself. Mm -hmm. Go, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. No, you can't. You're gonna stumble and fall and fail. Mm -hmm. But if you cast it all on me, yeah. and if you trust in me and lean up to your own understanding, yeah. and all your ways you acknowledge him, even in the midst of what you're going through, guess what? <laughs> He'll break you out. Yeah. Because God cool. is. Ooh, that song that's a good song. That song just came in my song. head. I'm going to play that when I'm done. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I just heard it. Okay. Psalms 34, 17 through 18. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. The Lord is near the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Amen. Yes. And if we just oh, get... Oh, yes. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. Yeah. It, it's one of those where... In the midst of what you're going through, the Lord will hear your cry. Mm -hmm. So don't forget, he said, that he will always be with you till the end of this age. He'll never leave you, never forsake you, and, and he'll deliver you if you allow him to. Again, don't hold on to it. Cast all your cares upon him. That grief, let let give it to God. And it's okay to be. Yep. It's okay to. It's okay to be there because gonna we all gonna face it. Gonna, yep, yep. We all have lost loved ones. Mm -hmm. We're losing loved ones now. But just know that that you know um, um, that God will bring you through it when you mm -hmm. allow Him to help you. He says the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, so He knows that you're brokenhearted. He knows what you're going through, but He saves those that are crushed. That means those that are humble, those that say, "Oh God, I can't do this by myself anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want this anymore." Lord, you take it, mm -hmm. and guess what? Yeah. He's faithful and just yeah. to cleanse you. Yeah. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> First Peter 5 and 7 Casting all your anxieties on him Because he cares for you mm. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4 6 through 7 Do not be anxious about anything But in everything by prayer and supplication With thanksgiving Let your requests be made known to God And, and the, the peace, peace of God Which surpasses all understanding Will what? Will guard your heart to do what again? In your minds in Christ Jesus Guard your heart mm -hmm. My heart and your heart. <laughs> Amen. Feel this thing today, y'all. <laughs> Psalms 121, 1 through 8. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Mm. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, 
He who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The mm -hmm. Lord is your shade and mm -hmm. your right hand. Mm. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. That's right. So if you hold on to that Amen. scripture. Amen. <laughs> or say la. Ponder on this thing. <laughs> Ooh, yes. So just 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 be mindful that the remedy starts at verse one. Mm -hmm. I will lift up my eyes to the hills where where, where from whence comes, comes from. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a question mark. Mm -hmm. So it's reminding you, wait a minute. But where does my help come That's from? Right. It comes from up above. My help comes from who? Yes, the Lord. What, who made heaven and, and earth. earth. And so if we're mindful of that, then when you're going through whatever mm -hmm. you're going through, you look to the, you know, that's also a song. Yes, you it know, is. That, yeah. That's very popular right now as mm -hmm. well, as well as, you know, an anthem that, that we have to remember that our help, he is our banner. Yeah. That he is our way maker. He is our sustainer. He is our provider. Mm -hmm. He is our keeper. Mm -hmm. He is our peace. Mm -hmm. So he's all these things for us that if we allow him to not hold on to it anymore and cast all of your cares to him, then you'll look up to the hills you're help yep. coming from because you'll know that your help coming from the Lord. Yep. And he goes and says, Behold, he shall keep his keeps Israel shall, excuse me, behold, he who keeps Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. So we are the children of God. We're mm -hmm. not we're not the children of Israel. We are joint heirs with Christ. Mm -hmm. We're grafted in because of what Jesus did on the cross and by faith we're part of him. So we we inherit that as well. Right. That, that he's got, if he helps Israel, he's a respecter person. That if we're part of the family of God, the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. he will also what help yeah. us. Yeah. The Lord is your keeper, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil, he shall preserve your soul. Oh, say that again. He shall preserve your soul. So you're not going to be lost forever. No. You may no. feel like it, but he'll bring you through. Yeah. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. So trusting and relying on him and not leaning to your own understanding, he will guide you, preserve you, and help you as you're going out and you're coming in. So mm -hmm. when you're going through it as well as you're coming out of it, mm -hmm. guess what? He'll be yeah. with you yes. forevermore. Amen? Amen. All right, let's let's oh I forgot to go. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we love you and thank you because you're an awesome God. Yes. And that there is none like you. Mm -hmm. That as your word says, we look to the hills where our help coming from, mm -hmm. and we know that now, and I've always known, but we have doubted, so we repent for that too. But our help comes from you, Lord. And we thank you for uh you being a patient God and a loving God, and that you know what's going on with us, and as we're going through these bouts of anxieties, going through depression, going through oppression, uh, going through doubt, or whatever we're going through as the enemy comes in to destroy us, that you will lift up a standard. We thank you for your word that reigns true. We thank you that you are a God that is a, that is a loving and caring God, that if we cast all our cares for, on you, that you will take care of it because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So today, from this day forward, we will yoke up with you. Mm -hmm. We are we, we repent again. We cast out the, the, the enemy of fear. We doubt, cast out the enemy in the spirit of doubt mm -hmm. and depression. We cast it out right now because you've given us the ability to stand strong in you. You said stand strong and see your salvation. So from this day forward, we will stand strong. And Lord, for those that we know that are battling with different issues, Lord, give us the, the patience and understanding. Give us yes. the anointing to help those that have been afflicted with this disease, Lord, and this mental illness and this, this spirit that has overtaken so many. And as we go through this situation of COVID, Lord, that that we, the church, that are the called out ones, will go back into the hedges and highways and kill, kill, and compel people to tell them that I know a man that knew all about me, that he brought me through my bouts or whatever it is that I've gone through. And that's the word of our testimony. We overcome by the word of our testimony and, and, and uh, uh, the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Yes. Help us and keep us in perfect peace as our minds stand upon you. Yes. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Oh, that was good, baby. That was good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, when we are, uh, it's kind of kind of apropos for now. We are on a, uh, I guess we're not supposed to be talking about it, but it's not too late to join in. We have started something called Fresh Start, Fresh Vision 21. It started on uh, January 11th, but you can join in anytime. Uh, it's, through, it's 21 days of fasting. It ends on the 31st. 
of this month. And uh, you can extend it longer if you start today or start tomorrow, whatever. Um, we have prayer every morning at 5.30 a.m. We post it online, we, um, and, and I'll get that information and post it under this under this post so that way you can get a hold of it because some things only come out by prayer and fasting, that's even depression. Sometimes you got to deny your flesh so that we can concentrate on God, and then through prayer you have communication with God, and then we're going to figure out how to do some worship in the midst of that. But it's 15 minutes of prayer. The Daniel fast means that we give, you know, we're putting, you know, that, that um, you give up meat, um, and things that are, you know, just, just, yeah. Yes. Thank so you. do that. And uh, we don't want to leave our broadcast today without giving a person that doesn't know Jesus uh, the opportunity to give his life to him. Uh, he died for our sins. And if you bother him with the depression, he's a healer. He's a yes, way maker. He he's able to lift you up. You're, you're, if you're heavy laden, you got a big burden, you got a yoke that's upon you that, that you can't think that anyone can fix it. But guess what? He can. He's mm -hmm. fixed it for me. So he's no respecter person. He'll fix it for you. So if you're battling with those things and you need some help, guess what? He's here. Mm -hmm. And I just repeat this simple prayer after me. Father God in heaven, Father God in heaven. I'm, a I'm a sinner. I believe mm -hmm. in the death, in the death burial, and, burial, and resurrection, resurrection of your son, Jesus. Jesus. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I confess in my mouth and believe in my heart that you were raised from the dead. This constitutes salvation. salvation. I believe it. I stand on it. Help me with me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just prayed that simple prayer, then you are now considered saved, and, and now you're part of the family of God. The enemy is going to try to destroy you, and I want to send you some information. Here is my contact information. Uh, how do I get back over here? Oh, yes, there we go. That's my contact information. That's my personal cell phone number. My personal email address and then if you're on messenger hit me up there if you're on youtube and you're watching it from youtube this is my contact information um or come over and friend me and i'll friend you and we're all good and we're, you know we can get you the things that you need to help you with your growth we have a book that we've written that has um over 18 lessons probably like 25 lessons because also know some 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 definitions that you need to understand and words that, you, that you'll hear in the church when you join the church or even words that when you're joining with us then we talk about your assurance of salvation, answer prayer, the victory that you have, the forgiveness of sin, all the things that you need to know on the basics of, of your new walk in Christ. This 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 uh, book, uh, I will get you, man, it will get to you for absolutely free. It's an e-book that I'll, that, I mean, it's we have a hardback book, but I'll send it to you for free so that way you'll have it through e-book form. We also have this available as a, as a complimentary um, uh, uh, resource to help with this. It's also done on CD. Or actually done on video, so you can, you can follow along with the Bible studies to help you with your faith in who you are now in with Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Uh, we thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, there we go. There we go. So we're done. Um, praise God. Praise God. Have a wonderful and blessed week, and we will see you again next week. Amen. We when we, when we depart from this place, but never from your presence, may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule and abide in each and every one of us until we meet again god bless you god bless you jesus loves you and so do we, we. love you